So I decided this month for January, I wanted to color in some of the spots um, with this version. And so I did what I did last month where I printed the pattern on the paper side of freezer paper. And you know what I found out too? You can use label paper. So if you get those label sheets that are eight and a half by 11 and you've used the labels, that works the same way as a freezer paper sheet. Who knew? Anyway, so then you iron the wax to the back of your fabric and using your light box, you can trace your design. And I like to use the Pilot Friction Pen that disappears with the heat of an iron. And I've picked out my thread colors. I'm gonna use DMC. And so I found some colored pencils that I think works nicely with those colors. We'll see. <laughs> um, so now that I've colored them in, I need to set it. Otherwise, um, as I'm stitching, I'm gonna rub those colors off. So the thing you want to be careful of is don't like go like this because what it'll do is it'll pull the blue out into the parts of the fabric you don't want the blue so you just have to go over the areas where you've done the um, colored pencil and try to keep the colors the same so I mean um, like if I'm doing blue do all the blue and then rinse your brush and do the red so that you don't carry some of that color into the other areas and you don't need a lot. And since this center part is kind of like last month where it's faded, so I'm gonna start with the darker side and then work my way into the faded so that if some of the color of the color pencil gets moved around, it'll kind of work with the design that I'm going for here. And it's as simple as that. And I think this brush is pretty clean still because there wasn't a lot of blue on there. Yeah. So I'll go ahead and um, I'm going to do the green because I kind of want to see what it looks like because they do change colors a little bit depending on how thick you apply the color pencil. If you go over it quite a bit, um, then when you apply this fixative, it changes the color just a tiny bit. So you can kind of see the difference between um, this leaf and those leaves. So it's going to look like that. Now I'm not sure what to do on here. I think, um, I think I'm, whoop, I got a lot on my brush there. Go back a little bit. I think I'll just kind of do a little at the center and if some of it comes off, that's okay with me because I just want it to be very faint. And then these little guys. So anyway, it's a it's kind of a meditative thing for me. I, you don't have to use any special brush. Um, just some cheap craft brush works great. And this is what I like to use, Jacquard Textile 100 Colorless Extender. And I found this on Amazon. And I've used this for a long, long time. And I still have over half of it left. So just a little one. You don't need to like invest in a gallon or anything. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna finish fixing these and then when it dries, I can start uh, stitching. After coloring it in with my colored pencils and I fixed it with the fixative and you can see a little bit here where the pink from the red pencil I used, when I was fixing it, I smeared it a little bit. So you do wanna be careful wash your brush out really well there's a little more pink there but it's not too bad anyway after i did that i had so much fun coloring it i think i went too far <laughs> colored in more than i should have because i tried just doing a little back stitch around them and they didn't they just didn't look right so i went ahead and filled them in with um, a satin stitch and i probably wouldn't have colored them in with a colored pencil, but maybe with a red Sharpie just so that it hides the fabric below. And I'll show you that in a, in a second. The other thing I want to mention about this one, and the same thing with these little blueberries too, is I used a Lazy Daisy stitch on these leaves, but they're just big enough that the Lazy Daisy wouldn't keep that shape on some of them. So, I went ahead and just 
tacked them. I don't know if you can see my little stitches where I tacked them in place, a little couching stitch. So it's perfectly fine to do whatever you'd like on that. And I did change the design just a tad bit. You'll notice on yours, I moved this snowflake down a little bit and got rid of that one and moved that one over a little bit. After I stitched it, I saw I wanted to change that. So, but I like the way it turned out. I think it turned out cute. And then I decided to stitch it again on Moda Linen. And this time I switched it up. I'm just stitching it in blue. And instead of having the holly and the pine, I thought it'd be fun to fill it full of snowflakes since it's called Winter's Brew. So uh, that's what I'm working on right now. So I'll go over some of these stitches and then uh, I'll go back and just touch base on some of these things too. So I have my thread on this. I'm using the Valdani 12 weight pearl cotton. It's the color is tealish blue. I really like that color. So when you do a stem stitch, I'll just start at the beginning, how about? You wanna start at one end. You don't wanna start in the middle of a line. And you're gonna pull your thread up and look at the shape of the line. This line is curved this way. So I wanna carry my thread on the outside of that curve. So I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch and come back up halfway in between. And that's my first stitch. Now I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch and come back up in that same hole that I just went down. And I'm continuing to carry the thread on the outside. Sometimes if it's a really sharp curve, like inside here, I went ahead and tacked it in place. So if you have listened to me at all, if you know me at all, I'm not a perfectionist. <laughs> It's more about uh, just enjoying the process. And um, so I don't mind tacking them here and there and getting it to look the way that I want. So that is a stem stitch. On the back, you can either tie a knot or you can just take your needle and thread it under some of the previous stitches to hold it in place. Since this isn't going to be something I'm gonna wash, this should hold it just fine. Now, if you did want to tie a knot, what I like to do is wrap the needle around two times, keep my fingers in that loop, and pull it all the way down so it touches the fabric, hold it in place, and I have a nice knot there. I repeat that and make another knot, just like a quarter of an inch above the last one, and then I can snip in between and my thread is all ready to go. Just a little tip. Now for the snowflakes, these are so small in the cup that I'm just taking individual little straight stitches. So I'm starting on the outside and going to the center and outside to center. You don't wanna start at the inside and go out because then you'll have a knot there that you're gonna to have to pull all these stitches through. So start at the outside and go in. And I like to just do a short stitch to the center as opposed to going all the way across because that leaves them kind of loopy looking and I wanted it to be more snug on the fabric. This is one of those little things that um, I do think about though. I know I'm not a perfectionist, but there are certain things I think about. So this tree is in the foreground of the snow. So I'm gonna do the snow first so that when I stitch the tree, it's going to go in front of that snow line there. And this again is just a little stem stitch. I'm gonna take it all the way to the end. And I like to pull my needle up right where the base of one of those little branches are. Now the branches are so tiny. These again are just straight little stitches. So I can just do each one individually. So they go really fast. I'll finish these up. The smoke coming out of the chimney is a little running stitch, which is super simple, but they are really tiny. So you can do them, I'll just do an example down here, where you take the needle up, down, up, down, up, down to get your running stitches. Sometimes if it's really small, 
I kind of find I do, it's kind of like a back stitch, only I don't meet up with the, the previous hole so that I can make them really close together. This is kind of a bigger example, but you kind of get the idea. So if you're doing really, really tiny ones, sometimes that's an easier way to go. But it's a very simple stitch for this little running stitch. Now on these snowflakes, they have some larger lines and then really short lines. So on the shorter lines, I just did a straight stitch. And on the longer ones, I did a stem stitch. So as an example on this one, that is a stem stitch, these long ones. And then all these little tiny lines are just individual little stitches. So the other thing this design has are French knots. So where there's a dot, there's a French knot. So you're gonna pull your needle up on the dot, pretend that there's a dot drawn there. And these I'm wrapping three times, which makes some pretty big little knots there. Maybe I'll do this snowflake with just two wraps. So we're gonna wrap around two times and put the needle down very, very close to where it came up. Now I'm gonna pull those wraps down to the fabric so they're snug but not too tight. I'm holding on from the front and the back so that knot doesn't go anywhere. And then just pull the thread through. So that is a French knot. Now these are small enough that I'm just going to make them a single straight stitch. Just like that. So the snowflakes go really quick. Okay, I'll finish this one up and then um, I'll touch base on a few more little things I wanted to point out on this, for this first one. This one is all done. I pressed it and I think it's really cute with the snowflakes. I like that I did it in a couple different ways. That will give you some choices. And this one is all done. So I wanted to show you a couple of things. One is when you're doing little berries like this. I found it's easier <laughs> to kind of start with a filled in color that kind of matches your thread. And on this one, I use the two strands of DMC floss. So I have two strands here. When I do a satin stitch, I'll usually start in the center and I found that it helps mine if I do use a hoop. I don't normally use a hoop, but I found that it's helpful if I do for certain stitches and a satin stitch is one. And I'm gonna do this one where I colored in the, the area first. And then I'm gonna do it again here, just so you can see the difference that that makes by filling that in if your stitches aren't perfect. So I'll go ahead and finish this and then I'll, I'll show you the difference. Okay, so I finished both of these. If you hear a low humming in the background, that's my neighbor's lawn service. Sorry about that. So this is the one I colored in, and this is the one where I just had the outline. And actually, I have to say I did a pretty good job because <laughs> you can't really see the fabric. But if I didn't, and these stitches weren't perfectly lined up, you can see there's, you can just see the fabric underneath. Whereas if this one, the stitches weren't perfectly lined up, you're not gonna see the color of this fabric. You're just gonna see the red that was filled in before. So the other stitch I wanted to show you is this Lazy Daisy that I used on these leaves. And I made them kind of big. You could back stitch them. You could stem stitch them, but they're pretty small. And I actually kind of like the way this looks. So I did a Lazy Daisy. So you pull the needle up right at the base and your thread is gonna kind of mimic the shape of this leaf. Then the needle goes right down in that same hole and then up at the top of the leaf. The thread is gonna go under the needle. Now, if I do it like that, it's, it's uh, gonna be kind of closed up and I want it to be more of a rounded leaf. So what I did is I just pulled my needle up on the line and then just went over that, pulled it back, and just went down in that same hole. And then I did the same thing on this side. And not all of them needed that, but some of them definitely did. 
just to kind of get them a little rounded. That one doesn't really look round at all, but um, the other option is to do a back stitch. So you're gonna start at the base and I take about an eighth of an inch and then another eighth of an inch. Now go back into that same hole, skip past where the thread came out about an eighth of an inch. And then you just continue to do this. For small curved lines, that's probably a really good option. Um, but I, I, I really didn't mind. I can't stitch and talk at the same time. Sorry, I don't. I didn't mind the way mine looked. I kind of thought they looked um, a little bit pokey and maybe like the way a real leaf would be. So, um, so that's an option too. Is to do. Oops, I got hooked up there. To do a back stitch, you can see the difference there, and then you can see on here, you can tell the ones that I did a little tack. And then some were small enough that I didn't do that. So you have options. And you know, mine are not perfect. Don't fret if yours aren't perfect. I don't know if you can see like some of these blue ones. They're, they're nowhere near being a circle, but that's okay. They were fun to do. And if you're just glancing at it you wouldn't notice <laughs> so thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you for being a part of this group and I hope you have a lovely new year happy 2022 it's gonna be a good year I have a feeling it's gonna be great so thank you for being a part of this group and we'll see you next month bye